Hey everyone, um, I want to talk about some additional features in the new Sketcher, and uh, it's under the included gallery. Okay, I'm not going to talk about include right now. I'll do another video about that one. I want to get into intersection curve. Now, with the intersection curve, it asks you for faces to intersect. So I'm going to pick this face. Now, notice I have what's called cycle solution. Okay, if I look at this, you'll note that at the bottom, I have a curve. I don't have one at the top. And if I wanted that curve at the top, I would have to cycle that solution to get the curve to the top. Now I'm going to select OK to create that curve. Now that that curve is in there, I'm going to go in and draw on a rectangle, make it a little big. And uh, the reason why I'm making this video is because I recently had a question about this. So if I go in there and I do a trim, I trim this, and I trim this, and I trim this, and oh, I want to trim this guy. Oh, wait a minute can't do it. Okay, trim will remove associativity of the recipe curve. Enable create persistent relations or use trim recipe curve to preserve associativity. Okay, so technically this is a recipe curve. Now if I look at include, there's my project curve, intersection curve, and I got add curves, I got all sorts of stuff here. I have uh, under my um, edit, I have my move curve, all these other things, and there seems to be a new one down here. It's called trim recipe curve. Associatively trims projection or intersection recipe curves to the selected boundaries. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. So what do I want to trim? I want to trim this. What are my boundary objects? Uh, this. I want to discard that stuff on the outside. Okay. So if I look, this is my boundary. I'm gonna select OK, and just like that, I have my trimmed curve and it has history. Now if I double click on this, remember this was an, an intersection. If I cycle that intersection, tell it to go to the bottom and select OK, right, it goes to the bottom. Now you see here this no longer is a uh, what's called a, a reference object, so I have to convert it to reference and the, and the trim recipe curve is now gone. Alright, so all right, a little bit of instability there, which is fine, not a big deal. Uh, I'm going to undo that, I'm going to undo that, and I'm going to undo this, and I'm going to go back to there. Now, <clears throat> another thing that you could have done is you could have turned on Create Persistent Relations. Now, this is a little easier than Trim Recipe Curve. So when I do my trim here, this acts just as I would expect it to act, okay? But you have to turn on the relations over here. Now, if I go in there and make an edit to this, and I swing it back down to the bottom, I end up with the same kind of bug. All right, so I'm going to call this a bug, and because uh, you know the recipe curve is no longer a reference element, it's converted back, and it's you'll see the or I should say included curve, and you'll see that it is you know no longer that segment in the middle. I know I could use selection intent and all sorts of other things to pick that segment, but what if I really wanted this to be trimmed? So I'm going to undo, undo, and I could have just left the rectangle there. But instead of trimming anything, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make a rectangle. I'm going to link it to that curve. Okay. Now, I have a, a relation set up on that curve. It is tied to this curve. So if I come over here, convert it, you'll notice the curve is in there. I don't have to worry about persistent relations. I don't have to worry about trimming. I don't have to worry about anything. So if you can, I recommend not doing any of the trims or anything of like that if you can get away from that. Okay, Just because this, sense, this seems to give me a little bit more uh, general uh, robustness. Okay. So once again, if I take this guy and cycle it and switch it down there, Hey, will you look at that? Everything worked out just fine. Okay, I converted it manually to a to a reference element, and that line that I drew in is a line that I drew in. So, this is the way to work around that. Okay, it works just fine. Now, something else. Uh, let's do undo, undo, undo. I'm gonna get out of the sketch. There's no curves in it. Something else that you can do, and this is what I typically do, okay, but I need to set up an extra datum plane. I know some people get angry at me. 
No, Steve, you're having an extra element in the tree. It's going to cause problems because the tree is a little longer. No, there's a reason why I don't necessarily care about the number of features that I have. I care about, does the model exercise well? Okay, what's the modeling technique that I used, right? If, if your biggest concern is having the fewest amount of features in the tree or parameters in the tree, just remove all the parameters and anytime you got to make a change, use the synchronous modeling, right? And then remove all the parameters again and again and again, right? Which, again, I, you know, I, don't, I really don't care about feature count. I really don't. So I'm going to put an extra datum in the tree. And I'm going to go into curve. And I'm going to go into intersection. And I'm going to pick this face. And I'm going to pick this datum plane, the one that the sketch sets on. Now notice this is acting in a... Uh, what I would say in a more predictable manner, something that I'm used to in NX, okay? I pick a face, intersect it with a plane, cylindrical face like this, I expect to see two elements, not just one, and then, then cycle through those elements to pick which one I want. The next thing that I like, I'm a big fan of, is the isolate object of feature. I've talked a little bit about this before. So with this, I'm going to pick this feature. Remember, this feature has two objects in it. What's my proximity object? This is my proximity object. I'm going to select OK. And what ends up happening, let me go ahead and hide the extrusion. Right? Those are, there's my intersection, and there's my isolate. So I'm going to hide the intersection. This, my dear friends, is a very stable element. I don't have to cycle anything. I don't have to worry about normals changing or vectors swapping out on me or whatever. I don't because this is always going to be up here based off of the proximity to this plane. If I change this plane and I move this down here somewhere, guess which one of those is going to come up? So I'll do the same thing. I'll bring it back up again. Always, always, always going to go to the proximity of that plane. So who cares if you have an extra couple of features in the tree? Not a big deal. In fact, I'll swing it the other way. It is a big deal to have those extra features in the tree to build stability into the model. You're taking the guesswork out of it. So now when I go into my sketch and I draw in my rectangle. Now, within work part only, I'm going to pick this. What? Look at that. As soon as I pick that element, as soon as I selected that element and said, hey, this is what I want to associate it to, this is what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do it, it right away boop, converted that element that it included. It automatically did the include for me because I'm within the work part. And it drew in the line and I got in the relations. Okay, uh, it takes a guesswork out of everything. Okay, that's how I like to do things. Now, this is how I was even before the new sketcher, even with the old sketcher. Right? I would always try to, uh, whether it was a composite curve or uh, an isolate this object because I've used this in the past and et cetera, et cetera, or a measured extreme. I always tried to use a stable element, a feature in the tree rather than a boundary representation, even though NX is really good with them. But boundary representations have a nasty way of switching based off of the normals on something. If something switches in one spot, it could cause a big cascade of events. So I try to remove that potential for that cascade of events. And here, just like that, I have my stable element. Now, if I move this, let me just edit parameters and bring this down here. And say okay, boy, will you look at that? Right. If I hide that isolate, man, isn't that beautiful? Add it the parameters. Bring that up again. Yeah, I get misty. It's absolutely beautiful. Very easy, very functional, very stable, etc. All the good things that you would want in a model. 